Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics and I'm back with another video that I'm hoping is going to be short but provide some helpful information. So I'm going to talk about how to choose good acoustic panels. So I actually think there's a lot more myth than reality around this and I actually want to start with something that probably is going to come off as controversial. So let me just say before I get into it, there's a lot of products on the market that are actually very well engineered. They perform very well and they're very well made. Aesthetically, it's up to you about whether that's something you like, but I find that most people don't like the look of acoustic panels that are like that. Basically, wooden frames with fiberglass and fabric around them. Often when you treat a room like that, what you end up with is something that we refer to as a man cave. It's something that isn't aesthetically great, but it's something that absolutely gets the job done and very well. So there are ways around that, but of course it costs more. So in terms of how to choose a good acoustic panel, that is a really well-made panel, but it doesn't necessarily perform in the room as part of a system any better than other options. So the first thing you want to think about is what do you need? So you don't want to just put a lot of absorption into a room. That can be a problem. And you don't necessarily need absorbers that have smooth, flat absorption across a huge wide bandwidth. At low frequencies, below 100 hertz, there really are no acoustic panels on the market that do much. Having said that, when you get into something that's, for instance, six inches thick with a relatively dense material, and maybe better yet, with some sort of a membrane on the front, and it can even be thin foil paper, um, that improves the low frequency absorption enough that if you have enough area, the cumulative effect is some benefit of adding damping at very low frequencies. Now, does that get rid of modes? Not really. You would need a lot on all the walls. And, you know, how audible is it? I actually still think it's potentially worth doing if you've got the room for it. So that brings up one of the first things to think about. What is the low frequency corner of absorption that you really need? So it's not uncommon, because walls themselves are lossy, for me to measure a relatively low decay, well, I should say relatively high decay time, but a low RT60 time below, let's say, three, four hundred hertz. It might hover around half a second or less. And then I might measure something quite a bit higher above that up until around five kilohertz where it tends to fall off again and you get a lot of that cumulative absorption of all the little things in the room. So you don't necessarily need four to six inch panels in all the walls. And that isn't necessarily a good thing. For one thing, you're losing a foot plus of space if, you know, when you cover both walls. Um, so two inches is a good number that we often go with. And if you use the right kinds of materials that are a little bit denser, I would say anything in the three pound to six pound range with denser being potentially better, you're going to get pretty good absorption down to three to 500 Hertz. And that's sufficient in a lot of rooms to really substantially help. Having said that, I have been in positions, my office is a good example. I needed something that looked good on camera. I needed to help reduce the RT60 time. I couldn't get away with putting in really thick, even two inch acoustic absorbers on the wall. So I decided to try a pet felt mural that is designed to be acoustically valuable to see what it would do. And my thinking was, well, it's very dense, so that's gonna help, but it's only a half inch thick. I can't imagine it's gonna do a lot. Having said that, I've treated rooms with one inch acoustic material before, and it totally transformed the room a lot better than expected. And the RT60 time was actually better than expected. Well, sure enough, that's the same thing that happened here. I put in this mural. We're actually going to probably do another one on my wife's side because she also does stuff on video quite a bit for her work. And um, it made a big difference. Now, it still would be valuable to add some additional absorption in this room that's thicker. And I may look at doing picture murals and things like that in other walls, but behind me, I really couldn't get away with something thick because there isn't much distance between the desk and the wall, and we would have been hitting it with our chairs quite a bit, which would have been a problem. Even one inch actually might have been an issue, so half inch is really nice. Um, I've done fabric walls before with only half inch material or one inch material. Again, totally transforms the room. But I prefer, and if you're designing a room, to stick with something that's about two inches. And I like to try to get four inches on the front and back walls if possible. If not, so be it. So first thing you wanna think about is thickness. Now a lot of people are gonna say, well don't we want fiberglass instead of foam? Not really. 
Um, they perform about the same. The differences that you see are actually really small. And if you were to cover a sufficient amount of area of all your walls with the same thickness of just plain foam, so not a foam like this. This actually has some issues, which is if you look at it like this, the amount of area here, this is one, um, one inch foam, but it's not. If you, because it's got all these little wedges cut out of it, the average thickness of this foam is only about half an inch, maybe less. And because of that, the net absorption that you get out of it is more akin to half inch or less of low density foam. So if you were to take a hunk of two inch foam and you were to wrap it in fabric and you were to compare that to an equivalent piece of fiberglass that's roughly the same density, one and a half to two pounds, you're gonna find that the two perform almost identically if not identically with no real advantage. And interestingly, Foam actually performs a little bit better than fiberglass does per density. In other words, a lower density foam tends to have a little bit better absorption overall, including down into low frequencies, than fiberglass or mineral wood at lower frequencies. The problem is the vast majority of polyurethane foam that's used in acoustics is really low density. It's like one to one and a half pounds sometimes a little bit higher. There isn't a lot of test data on higher density foam, so it's a little hard to know, but there are some acoustic products on the market from companies like Art Novian, um, and what we do see is some of their higher density and better quality foams actually perform about as well as anything else. I also have been in positions where I've totally retreated a room. So a room was treated with something like, I actually had one once where a guy had put in three inch Oralex foam. I, mean, I think it was pyramids or wedges, something like that for the shape. But it was, I believe it was three inch, um, or might have even been four inch, I might have that off a little bit. It didn't look good, you know, it had actually aged in the foam, it started to deteriorate, but overall it was fine. And sound wise, I remember going in there and thinking his biggest problem was just too much absorption. But he was really insistent that that's what he likes and he wanted to keep it that way. But he wanted to do it better. So he had asked me what to do and I said, well, you know, anything that's more of a panel style with a wool, a mineral wool or, or fiberglass probably will perform better, it will age better, things like that. Okay, so he goes and he buys actually a, a GIK acoustic panel and I, I like the guys at GIK and their product is a really good value. You know, aesthetically, it's not my favorite stuff, but for the price, you can't beat it. And quite frankly, for the same money, there isn't anything that looks better. So. He bought a whole bunch of that and we replaced it. And I had measured the room beforehand and he had big, I think it was the Leonard bass traps and he had, had bought, he bought like everything they sold. So we had just, the room had been done up and we actually didn't put back in, <coughs> excuse me, quite as much uh, absorption area, but it was really, really close. It was, I mean, that there, everything was calculated out and it was very, very close. And we hadn't put any diffusers in, which he didn't have originally. And that was part of a la later upgrade that we did. And so we did the whole room up and we tested it. And the RT60 with the foam was 0.25, which is really, really low. I mean, that's very close to what we call effectively anechoic. And then we put all the stuff in from GIK and it came in at like 0.27 or something like that. And like I said, there was an ever so slight difference, maybe 10 or 20 square feet of absorption lower after the room was treated than before. But like there was probably, I and mean, when I say 10 or 20, I think it went from 450 to 440 square feet of absorption area. So quite a bit. So the, the thing was the room measured about the same. The base performance was actually about the same. The RT curve was very, very similar. Um, if anything, there was actually less high frequency absorption and the RT curve flattened out a little bit at the high frequencies because there was more reflections at high frequencies, probably from the fabric. From a sound quality standpoint, it sounded about the same. And the guy was pissed. He had just spent a fortune. And I basically said to him, look, the foam was deteriorating. So even if we didn't get any sort of sound quality improvement, at least you don't have a product that's rotting on your walls. And he, he yeah, yeah. Um, having said that, once we had pulled all the foam down and we had said it was rotting, I looked at it and I don't think it was rotting. I think the foam was fine and I'm sure Oralex is going to hear this and say, hey, hey, it wasn't rotting, we treat it. I think what had happened is UV light had discolored it. Um, some of it had started to fall apart, but he himself had told me that he and his kids had touched the foam a lot and so it probably was falling apart just from being handled too much. Um, so I actually don't have an issue with foam. I just think that I prefer things covered in fabric. Um, all right, so that's that, two inches. 
as I said, if you're gonna have it covered in fabric though, you do want it to be acoustically transparent. I mentioned before that one of the issues we noticed when we went to the GIK panels was there actually was apparently less absorption at high frequencies. And we were seeing a flatter RT60 curve. It used to actually, the RT60 uh, went down at high frequencies um, sooner than it was after we treated with GIK. I liken this to probably increased reflection off of the fabric, which is, a, this is a known effect. So what I would say is choose that fabric carefully. It doesn't have to be 100% perfectly acoustically tra uh, transparent, but what you don't want to do is just put any old fabric over it or just assume that the fabric that the company's using is acoustically transparent. There are a lot of fabrics that really aren't. Everything that I use, I've personally tested. So Acoustamac is a company that I have a dealer account with and, and that I like for the price, just like GIK, very, very well-priced product, it's well-made. They actually haven't tested their products, but I have. And I've tested all their fabrics. All their fabrics actually are really nice for what they are. Suede is not as acoustically transparent as their DMD fabric, but they're very similar. Anything that you get from um, Guilford of Maine is gonna be acoustically transparent. They're not all equal, so different fabrics from them um, have a different degree of acoustically transparentness. And what I would say is going with something like the suede or a fabric that's similar um, has the benefit of actually having a little bit more reflections, and that may be a good thing. There's often too much absorption at high frequencies. What I wouldn't do, and I've seen this done before, is, you know, let's just say you're looking around and you find this fabric and it's got a really cool pattern on it. Um, it's I, the one that I actually ran into a problem with was a silk fabric. It was very expensive, but it was it matched other materials in the house, and the wife had asked for it to be used in the theater. So I asked him to buy me um, a, a roughly three by three. Uh, and it turned out the fabric was actually 60 inches wide, which is more common, and then I got a meter of it, and we wrapped it around a, a frame and measured it in front of a speaker, and it was blocking sounds to such an extreme that even at like 500 hertz, we were losing about four decibels of output. At 20 kilohertz, we were losing like 15 to 18 decibels of output, something like that. And, and it was causing comb filtering outside, which is really unusual. I mean, I tested the fabric up on my measurement stand. Um, the comb filtering that I was getting apparently was related to sound reflecting off the speaker because when I moved the microphone around, it went away. But I, I could tell right away that that fabric was a problem. So you got to use something that's rated for this purpose. I do want to go back to the depth issue. So the thickness of it doesn't make it absorb more sound. It makes it absorb more sound at lower frequencies. So a half inch material will absorb just as much sound energy at five kilohertz, uh, assuming that it's not reflective, as a 10 inch um, acoustic absorber. It's what's happening below 500 hertz or so where you start to see that difference. So like a one inch panel, probably the cutoff frequency is going to be somewhere between 800 hertz and one kilohertz. A two inch panel tends to get you down to closer to five or 600 hertz. The density can affect that, but we're talking about a small amount. We're not even talking about an octaves difference. We're talking about going from like 600 to in the 500-ish range. It may even be 550. Um, going to three inch might get us down to like three, 400. Going to four inch gets us typically down to about 250 to 300. Now that is not a hard cutoff, it's a roll off. And so I will say the other thing to think about is area tends to be more imp important than density. And when picking materials, you wanna make sure you're getting enough area. You don't want so much absorption area that you're getting an anechoic room, but you do want enough absorption area that you're getting it to a point where um, you're getting that RT60 into that target 0.3 to 0.35 second range. And what I would say is that if as long as you're covering enough area around the room and you want to cover you don't want to place all the absorption in one place then you're going to get some net benefit at low frequency so even if the absorption coefficient is only like 0.25 it adds up so it's definitely worth having um, and then as i mentioned earlier about having no issue with foam don't obsess about small differences. There's a lot of companies out there that have tried to really point out how their product is better because it's got you know, 0.35 instead of 0.25 at 150 hertz. Besides the fact that the labs are not all that accurate and that those kinds of differences are not unheard of just from you know, differences between measurements within the lab, um, and definitely those kinds of differences are seen all the time in lab-to-lab -lab measurements, the other thing, the much more important one, is even if they were perfectly accurate and those results were correct, the net effect in the room is probably not that great. 
And so what I say is choose the product that's the right one for you. If you're looking at two products, they're functionally equivalent to each other and they look the same, but one measures a little better for the same money, yeah, sure, get that one. But if you're looking at two panels and one is not a particularly attractive panel and the other is a really beautiful panel, um, the one product that I sell, I, I recently did a video on it to show you, I got into this brand purely for its aesthetics. I mean, acoustically, I know the product is good, but it was just an aesthetics thing. Their products are well made. And uh, it's Art Novian, and they have the Sienna line. And I really like these, the Sienna line specifically for myself. Now, I've, I've had some other people who say they're just not into that pattern. But it's this linear pattern made of wood. It's wood slats. They actually vary the thickness of the panels. I'm sorry, the, the very the thickness uh, width of the slats themselves, which changes how sound would reflect off of them. Other companies do something similar, but they don't, to me, it doesn't look anywhere near as good for a number of reasons. One is typically it's melamine instead of real wood. Um, so it's like an MDF core that then has like a melamine finish. I don't find that to be as attractive. Um, the other thing is that just the way it's done. So typically it's just sort of CNC'd into it. And then when you make a whole array of these panels on a wall, it just looks like a bunch of panels put together. The way that Artnovian did it is that the slats are actually separate slats. And when you put them together, it just looks like a big panel that was designed to be made that way. So aesthetically, it looks a lot better. And you can get lacquer finishes like piano black. You can get uh, some matte finishes that are painted. You can get various wood finishes. Some of them are really nice. Like they have an oak finish that looks really, really good with like a white or a cream fabric. And then they also have a walnut, which is what I did. And that looks great actually with the white or cream fabric as well, or in darker rooms with black. And then of course, there's tons of other options you could go with, but it looks to me high end. It's made high end. Of course, unfortunately, it costs a lot more money. It's a way more expensive product, but I have to live in that room. So the other thing when it comes to choosing panels is choose something you can live with. The aesthetics matter. You can get the acoustic effect you want, but it's really hard to transform something that it starts off ugly and make it pretty. Like I can't take a two by four panel of fabric and turn it into a piece of art. It needs to be made that way in the first place. And unfortunately that tends to cost more money. So that's my spiel, I guess, on how to choose a good acoustic panel. I hope this was helpful and I have more videos coming. So until next time.